My name is Matt Williams, and I'm an evangelist at Datadog. Now, kind of curious, how many of you have, um, let's start off with, heard of Datadog? Okay, yeah, that number keeps increasing over, you know, I've been doing this now for about three years, and uh, the first time, yeah, how many, how many of you have heard of Datadog is like 1% of the audience, so it's great to see it's growing. Um, so I'm an evangelist at Datadog. Um, I'm also an organizer for uh, an event in Boston. I don't know if any of you are from uh, Boston, but uh, we're having DevOps Days Boston uh, coming up in just a few weeks. So if you're uh, uh, in Boston, we'd love to have you there. Uh, if you have any questions about what I'm going to be covering here, uh, you can reach me on Twitter. Uh, I'm at Technovangelist on Twitter. And I'll include my email address. Uh, right at the end of the session. Now, of course, it's a pretty short session, but uh, it's about 40 minutes. Um, but, uh, and, and the title is Better Metrics Through Scripting. Now, being 40 minutes, I can't give you everything you need to know about scripting, but at least I can get you uh, started. And hopefully you'll um, have enough to, to know what to, where you wanna, which direction you want to take. If you want access to the slides, um, it's right there at uh, dtdg.co slash nginx17deck. Um, and uh, if you're one of the cool kids, you can use a QR code instead. Um, but uh, it takes me, it's easier for me to type in a URL. Anyway, so let's get started. So Datadog, we're a SaaS-based infrastructure monitoring company uh, collecting data from all of your hosts. We are a metrics company. We are bringing in, uh, right now, it's somewhere in the order of a trillion, trillion and a half uh, data points per day from all of our customers. Um, and, uh, and we do that through an agent. Um, so we collect all these metrics via an agent. And that agent is going to, uh, you install that agent on your local machine or, or on an on a instance on AWS or on Google Cloud or Azure, or we don't really care where the machine is. Uh, you install this agent, and then, uh, so you install the agent, and then you install, or then you uh, create some uh, configuration files for all the different integrations that you care about. And so every 15 seconds, we'll go through all of your integrations. And so I'm not sure why I picked Fluent D to go up top, but um, Nginx, we're at an Nginx conference, so uh, maybe Nginx is one of those integrations. But it could also be Fluent D or Postgres or you know, whatever else that you care about. Now, hopefully you're not loading up you know, 1,000 uh, applications on your Nginx server. There's all sorts of security reasons why that might not be a great idea, but um, you could. We, we don't care what else is. Uh, we'll, we'll keep running all these integrations. So every 15 seconds, collect all this data. So what's it look like to create a configuration? Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, we really, all we care about is that uh, Nginx status. So um, uh, we're as looking for an Nginx status URL. Um, and often, it's going to be probably localhost slash Nginx status, or something like that. So Nginx status is the key uh, part of this line. OK, so how do you set up Nginx status? Uh, if you've got the open source version of Nginx, then it's going to be you know, create a location block. Uh, Nginx status is a good name. Um, and uh, plop in the uh, stub status module in there. And so the output of stub status is going to show up on Nginx status. Pretty similar thing in uh, Nginx plus. Um, you know, just a location block, Nginx status, um, except that you're calling the status um, command. OK, so that's pretty easy. So what's it look like when you look at uh, the status page? You're probably going to see something like this. Not exactly friendly, but a computer can understand this. Um, and so we've got this uh, JSON. Um, and here I've got all sorts of information. I've got, uh, you know, up at the top, I've got, you know, virgin information. I've got, uh, what else is in here? I've got information about all of my servers that are involved. I've got a lot of stuff. Now. Some of you are looking at this and thinking, huh, I've seen that stub status module. I ain't seen that. Uh, so you might be thinking, this is weird. This is, this is not what you have seen before. You've probably seen something closer to this, which is a lot different than that. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the status module that comes with uh, Nginx+. What we're looking at here 
is what you get with the stub status module for Nginx open source. It's a lot different. So what you get with uh, the stub status module is these seven metrics. Nginx writing, waiting, and reading. So how long does, it st does Nginx take at each one of those stages? Uh, how many connections are open right now? Uh, how, how many requests are being processed per second? Um, and then how many connections um, are being opened per second and how many are being dropped per second? Whereas if you're looking at Nginx Plus, you got a lot more metrics. And this isn't even all of them. Um, so this is a lot of them. I think I got rid of some of the ones that look too repetitive. So I could fit them on my screen. But generally, this is um, uh, the metrics that come with Nginx Plus. So how do you get more metrics? What are some met methods for getting additional metrics um, that, you can, uh, that, that your monitoring system can collect? Well, there's, I thought about this, and I thought there's really three ways to get more metrics. You could have some kind of aggregated stats view, and that's what Nginx status is. You know, it's that, uh, or the stub status module, or the status module in Nginx Plus. That's what that is. Um, and you could create your own. So I'm going to show you one, a couple ways to create your own um, uh, aggregated stats view. Another thing you can do is let your log aggregation tool create the stats. And so this means you need to get a lot more metrics into your log files. So you need to configure your log output. I'll talk a little bit about how to do that in general, but then also how to use scripting to configure your log output. Finally, you could send all the stats from each request directly to your monitoring platform. Now, each one of these has strengths and weaknesses. You know, sending each request stats every time a request comes in to your monitoring platform, well, it's probably really good if you're getting 10 requests per second. But if you're getting millions of requests per second, can your monitoring platform handle that kind of load? How does it deal with it? Are they going to, you know, if you send a million uh, metrics per second to Datadog, we might have a friendly conversation. Uh, our sales team and you might have a nice conversation, maybe. Um, but uh, you know, our other platforms, will they even be able to handle it, or will they just break down? Using a log aggregation tool, that's pretty cool, but uh, now you need to have that log aggregation tool. Now, if you've already got something like Splunk, or Sumo Logic, or Logstash, or Logly, or any of these guys, um, then, OK, great. But you have to configure that, those applications. And then uh, the way that Datadog works with these is you generate a report, and we suck in that report so we get those metrics into Datadog. And it's similar with other platforms as well. Getting an aggregated stats view, that's really great. But now you're only getting kind of this aggregation. You're not getting information about you know, how often are, is data being aggregated. Maybe you don't have control over that. Uh, so these are all you know, pluses and minuses to each one of these things, each one of these solutions. Now, if you're just talking about getting metrics into your logs, Nginx provides a lot of detail. You can stick a lot of stuff in that log file, really only limited by a limit of a, how long a line can get. Um, because here's all the Nginx variables I could find, um, and they don't even fit on one page. Uh, so I, of course, I had to let it scroll. Um, so here we go. I go through, and even then, I'm not fitting them all in because they didn't fit in my nice columns. So I didn't want to have wrapped words. So there's a lot of stuff that we can have in our log files, which is great. So how do you configure that log file? Well, here's a sample configuration. Um, really, all I'm doing is defining a log format, in this case called compression, um, and then spitting out a, a string with a bunch of variables in it that are going to be filled in at each request. So I've got this string with a bunch of variables in it, and then below in that server block, I've got access log, where do I want to store my access log, and what uh, format do I want to have in there? So pretty easy to do. So what about scripting? What can you do with scripting? What, what, what does scripting offer you that you can't do just in your log file? Well, well, first off, let's talk about the different choices you've got for scripting. There's really two choices when it comes to scripting. For scripting, your Nginx configuration file. First off, you can use Lua. 
Uh, with Lua, you're using OpenResty. Uh, OpenResty is available in two different formats, two different uh, methods of uh, installation. Uh, first off, you can just install OpenResty, and OpenResty includes Nginx um, and includes a lot of other modules to kind of get you going um, and makes it really easy to get started with. But if you've already got an Nginx environment, you can just add the OpenResty Lua modules um, to that Nginx server. It has the advantage of being really mature. It's been around for a number of years, and it's a pretty active community. There's a lot of stuff that's been added to OpenResty, so that's really pretty cool. But recently, there was another alternative to uh, OpenResty and Lua. There's EngineScript. Um, EngineScript is much newer. It's only been around for a couple of years, and, um, and it's still got, there's still like two really, really important features that are not there yet. Uh, and there's a lot of other features that are not there yet, but it's, it's created by Nginx, and you may already know the language, essentially, because you probably know JavaScript. Now, it's not exactly JavaScript. It's not like V8 just thrown into Nginx. They rewrote the engine for Nginx. And it's, you know, if you're used to all the newest things that are part of ES6 or newer uh, than that, then many of those things you can't do in EngineScript. But a lot of the more traditional engine script or JavaScript is available in EngineScript as well. So you can write your logic in, essentially, JavaScript. So Lua. Definitely more mature, but engine script created by Nginx and has a lot of promise and hopefully will be awesome really, really soon. So what are some scripting benefits? Um, I could have a per request configuration file. Every time a request comes in, essentially I've got a brand new configuration file with different settings for my log format. So every time um, a different uh, set of pages is accessed or a different set of users access those pages, I have a different log format. Maybe I have a different server. Maybe I have a different, uh, uh, I, I, everything in my log file can be different for every request based on request parameters or whatever else. I, I can create a, um, a log file that is very, very dynamic. Could be confusing, but it could be really dynamic. Um, and you can provide additional functionality. So you could do sub-requests, potentially. Um, so one of the things that OpenResty offers is the idea of sub-requests. Every time a request comes in, Nginx might do a sub-request out to some database server or some other place to get additional information, munch that data together, and maybe write that to a log file or uh, display it to the user. And one other example of what you could do with scripting uh, is a reloader. So um, if you go to, uh, again, you'll have the slides, but uh, it's uh, dtdg.co slash nginx17-reload, um, you'll see something like this. Well, you'll see a blog post uh, that talks about this, but essentially this is a way to reload your Nginx server every time you visit a certain page. So the, this guy's uh, particular scenario was he's got Nginx in a Kubernetes cl cluster and wants to be able to reload that um, every time he updates the configuration file. Now, if you've got Nginx Plus, that's one of those features that comes in Plus. You re uh, edit the configuration file, and it can reload uh, dynamically. But Nginx open source, you don't, you don't really have that. And so basically what it's going to do when you hit slash reload, now, this is not something, you're, a page you're going to have available to everybody in the world, but when you hit the page uh, slash reload, it's going to execute nginx-s reload. So now I've got a way to reload my server configuration file every time I make edits to that configuration file. So maybe you make that part of the uh, save process in your editor. Uh, just hit that page. So that's pretty cool. And that's something you can do with Lua and OpenResty. Now, there are some scripting gotchas. It's not all, well, maybe these aren't, these are just things you need to think about. It, really, it's one thing you need to think about. Scripting environment is flushed every request. Every, every request that comes in, it's a brand new environment. Brand new environment. So I can't do anything to save directly in the platform I, I, or directly within that environment. I can't do anything to save um, you know, some sort of variable between requests. So request per second, I'm not going to be able to do, unless I do something tricky. And I can do those tricky things in Lua, 
Uh, Lua supports buckets of information that I store, maybe in a Mongo uh, database or Redis or Memcache, or, and it's got all these modules that make it really easy to save information into Memcache or Redis or Mongo or wherever you want to save that information to. And it can also do the sub requests. And it, so basically, that allows me to pull information out or push information to any uh, web, data, uh, web endpoint. An engine script, maybe we'll see some of that stuff later this year. Maybe. Uh, I, I'm hoping. One thing I, I was kind of corresponding with uh, somebody at Nginx, and they were suggesting that it is potentially possible that such a feature. Uh, basically, writing to a file could potentially be seen maybe this year, and um, writing or uh, doing sub requests out to a network potentially also in a year ish, but not before the file. So soon we could have a solution here on the engine script side, which is going to be great. So let's go back to my list. I had a list of three things I could watch an aggregated stats view. I could let your log aggregation tool create those stats and you, uh, you know, put and push those into your monitoring tool, or you can send each request stats directly to your monitoring platform. So let's take a look at the first one. How do you do it? Well, the first example I like to show is Lua meter. Um, pretty cool thing I found online. Um, uh, basically, 49 bucks gets you a. Uh, um, all, those, all those metrics that you think are, that are going to be important that you don't have access to on um, uh, Nginx open source, 49 bucks. And uh, that you can load that on multiple servers. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, if you want the, so that's going to give you a compiled Lua module. If you want access to the source code, add an extra zero to the end. Well, extra nine to the end. Um, it's uh, $499 for, you know, that's your company license, and now you can load it up on as many boxes as you want. So that's this is the, the kind of human readable version, and then we've got a more computer readable version. So I've got my JSON, which something like the uh, the um, Datadog agent can uh, can read and process and pull stuff in. But maybe you want to do it yourself. You want to understand how this was built. So you could use something like Lua Resty Stats. So I've got a URL down at the bottom slash nginx 17 resty stat. I'm just going to skip that dtdg.co because it's kind of hard to read. But so every time I say a URL, it's going to be dtdg.co slash, and then in this one, it's nginx 17 resty stat. Um, so this is um, a GitHub repo that has uh, an example of how do you collect stats, save the stats to a bucket. Uh, in this case, it uses Mongo. Um, save it to a bucket um, so that the next time a request comes in, I can add you know, the data to that bucket or make some calculations from that bucket. So um, second request comes in in a minute. I add 60 seconds, divide it by 60, and I know how many requests per second I'm receiving, uh, roughly. Um, and they've got an example of a query page as well. So you can um, go to a certain page and then query the data for uh, any of the metrics that you're collecting. So that's really, really neat. So it's something you should definitely take a look at. How do you do this with engine scripts? You can't. Uh, not yet. But so hopefully soon you will be able to when we can write to a file and then when we can do sub requests. It'll be awesome soon, just not yet. Hopefully, I, hopefully yeah. I want it to be soon. It's like engine script is like the little feature that I wish I could love more. Um, so anyway, so engine script is pretty cool, but we can't do that yet. OK, let's go back to log aggregation uh, tool, creating, uh, let your log aggregation tool create your stats. So you could do, with, here's something you can do with engine script, create a custom log file using engine script. Now engine script, um, in the configuration file, there's really there's a few different um, uh, commands you can use, but there's really two that are most important. There's JS include, which includes some JavaScript file. Well, it's actually engine script, but it's got a JS extension. Or it's got whatever extension you want, I think. It's uh, just a file. So include a file. And then JS set. And JS set is going to take any of the functions that are in that file and whatever the output is, store it in the Nginx uh, configuration file variable that you've uh, uh, declared there. So here I'm doing the JS include. I'm including that uh, Nginx script file. 
And then I'm setting, there happens to be a KV access log function inside header logging JS. Uh, KV access log is in key value uh, access log. And it's going to save the output of that function into access log with headers, uh, that variable. And then down below, oh, uh, well, OK. So what's that function doing? It's basically just going through a bunch of variables and saving them out to an, a line, uh, calculating time, uh, formatting things a little bit nicer, and then going, there's a KV headers, uh, key value headers uh, function. So what's key value headers doing? It's basically just cycling through all the um, headers and creating a key equals value uh, kind of string and adding that to the um, uh, string that gets output from my function, uh, from KV access log. And now I'm setting the value that's in the variable access log with headers to KV pairs. So log format KV pairs is the output of that function. And then access log, that's these last two things were basically have always been in the configuration file. Log format and access log have always been there. And I'm just setting it to the output, essentially setting it to the output of a function. It's so pretty easy. You can also do that with Lua. There's plenty of examples. We don't need to go into that here. What about sending each request stats? I want to send, every time I get a request comes in on, into Nginx, I want to have that sent off to my monitoring platform. How do I do that? With Lua, pretty easy. Um, I'm using an example that uses Datadog, but uh, this, I believe, might be a fork of something that uses something else. But um, essentially, here, uh, it's just using uh, Lua Datadog. And we're um, requiring the Nginx Lua Datadog uh, module um, and then setting up some new information, just, just setting up the, the connection. Um, and that new uh, function is just you know, setting up some base. How do we connect to that Datadog agent? It's got a host, it's got a port, it's got a socket, uh, it's got a namespace, and a few other things, and, and setting all that stuff up so that we're going to be able to use it later on. And then lower down, if a certain condition happens, then run counter um, and uh, feed counter some parameters. And counter, what counter is doing is it's just taking those values in, a stat, some sort of uh, metric, uh, the value you want to send to that metric, the sample rate, and if there's any tags you want to send it as well, you can do that. And all that's doing is just feeding it over to send dogsasd. So send dogsasd is basically opening up that socket and sending that data to your, uh, in this case, I believe it's sending it to your, uh, the local agent that's on the machine, and the agent will then um, uh, uh, process the data and send it on to, up to Datadog. OK, so let's change gears a bit and talk about this is not something that is using uh, um, Lua or EngineScript, but is just a really cool module if you're using Datadog. Um, and that is Nginx DogSatsD. And now this is a fork of Nginx StatsD. Uh, really, all that we're doing with DogSatsD is uh, adding the ability to send tags as well. That's really the, the main difference between SASD and DocSASD is sending tags as well. And so now I've got some additional commands in my Nginx configuration file, like DocSASD count and DocSASD timing. Um, and I've got a few other ones as well. Um, and so I'm sending a to the metric uh, name, uh, your product.request, sending a value of one. So adding a value of one to the count your product.request. And I've got a few other examples below that, a few other counts uh, and timing. So now if I apply that back to what we saw with EngineScript, I could do something like this, where I might have a JavaScript or EngineScript file called metrics.js, and it's got four functions in it. It's got US requests, UK requests, uh, DNT requests, and I, God, what is, forgot what DNT stood for. But anyway, DNT requests, um, proc time, uh, how long did it take? And then I can just do that docsasd count, provide it that uh, metric name, and then basically sticking the output of my engine script function. Now, I could just as easily do this with Lua. So whichever one you prefer, Lua or engine script. And I, God, I want to love engine script, so I got to use it here. So let's take a look at what we just talked about. How did I get to 15? OK. so. Um, First off, scripting makes it better, possible to get better metrics. How, it makes it possible to get more metrics into your, um, into your monitoring system, because you should be 
Of course, I've skipped probably a, an important part. I hope you are all monitoring your environment. I hope that you're, you're collecting data about all the Nginx servers or everything else that's in your environment. I hope you're collecting this data. Hey, it's awesome if you're using Datadog, but use, if not, there's Prometheus out there, which is great. There's uh, Sysdig. There's all sorts of other uh, platforms out there. Uh, Nagios, there's all sorts of other ones out there. Use something. Um, if you're not using any sort of monitoring, there's no way you can know if you're improving or going the other direction. So got to have some sort of monitoring, and scripting makes it possible to get better metrics into that monitoring system. Now we've seen that we can use Lua or EngineScript, so that's great. Lua is perhaps a lot more fun, not perhaps, it is a lot more functional today. Um, and EngineScript soon will be great. Uh, and then Lua, yeah, EngineScript has potential. So cool. Now, before I end, I want to show you some other things you can do with Lua. Now, this is out of scope of monitoring, but there's, a, you know, there's so many of these uh, awesome, awesome X, uh, awesome Nginx, awesome C, awesome whatever, you know, anything that you care about, put awesome at the front of it, and there's probably a GitHub repo that lists a bunch of things that are really cool about whatever that topic is. And so I did a uh, search for awesome Resty, and there's this great list of all these uh, modules, Lua modules, on top of, uh, on top of Open Resty that uh, do some really neat things with Nginx. And they, they break them down into a lot of different categories. So under Dev Essentials, there was something about uh, just dealing with cookies. There are all sorts of routing libraries and middleware. There's a middleware provided by Kong. Um, there's templating. You know, if you want to write all your pages in a liquid template format, then you can have Nginx process those natively. Um, validation and authentication, cryptography. You, know, you want to use Let's Encrypt, but you're tired of having to remember to log into Let's Encrypt every 60 days or whatever to renew that, and you can have it set up inside Nginx. There's network uh, modules. There's database and storage modules. You know, being able to read and write to MySQL and Postgres and Mongo. You could do profiling with flame graphs, which is really cool. Um, message queuing with Kafka. Uh, creating um, barcodes or QR codes as well. Uh, to make that whole process easier, or compression, or image formats, or caching, being able to cache to uh, memcache or some other caching uh, um, format, ca uh, service, all sorts of things that you can do uh, with uh, Lua modules that are built, and they, they provide this long list. And logging, uh, some other options about logging. In fact, uh, I think one of them is, you know, now you can always um, customize your access log, but you don't really have much customization abilities around the error log. Um, you can set the error level, warn versus debug or, or something else, um, but there's a log module for being able to customize your error log, which is pretty cool. So those are some of the cool things you can do with um, Lua on Nginx. And that, oh, there's, if you want to learn more about Lua there are, or EngineScript, there's two really great videos you can watch. First off, you can look at uh, latest and greatest from Nginx Lua. This is actually from Nginx Conf three years ago. I uh, have the guy who created uh, OpenResty um, talking about you know, why did he create it and um, what's been going on since, um, since he started and uh, up until three years ago. But it's continued since then, so this is not the last thing. But it's a nice video, a nicely formatted video. Um, so you can reach it um, at slash dd nginx dash vid1. And, um, hmm. uh, and then if you want to know more about EngineScript, there's a new and powerful way to configure Nginx and EngineScript uh, by... Um, uh, Igor, from here, from Nginx. Um, what's this, this is something. Um, so uh, he uh, talked about EngineScript um, a couple years ago, um, and it's a great introduction to uh, EngineScript. So that's at uh, slash dd nginx dash vid3. Yes, there was a vid2 in there, and somebody suggested I take it out, and I forgot to rename my URLs. So that's why there's a vid, vid2 is also interesting in case you're curious. I can't remember what it was. I think it was a routing, uh, some sort of routing uh, thing with Lua. Okay. And so that brings me to the end. So again, my name is Matt Williams. I'm an evangelist at Datadog, also an organizer at DevOps Days Boston. 
You can reach me on Twitter, at Technovangelist, and you can also reach me on email, mattw at datadoghq.com. If you want a copy of this deck, again, it's hpdtdg.co slash nginx17deck. Uh, and again, if you're one of the cool kids, you can use that cool QR code, which I hope works. OK, so that brings me to the end. I've got about nine minutes left. Any questions? No questions? OK. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, have a great, uh, so, oh, oh, actually, one more thing. We do have a booth. In case you didn't hear enough about Datadog and want to hear more, we do have a booth out there. We can uh, do a demo. We're happy to do as many demos as you like. You can get a cool t-shirt like this if you want, and uh, even better, the uh, awesome sticker uh, that's on my laptop. So cool. Thanks so much for uh, joining me. Bye. <laughs>